Whoa, 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 whoa. I guess I'm back. Well, this is different. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Parks and Tech. My name's Josh. I like beer and whiskey. I review things, a lot of things, and this is just another segment of some thing. If you like things as much as I do, be sure to hit that like button, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you won't miss a day when I post a new video. Today we are taking a look at a trail camera from a company called iZeeker. A special thank you to iZeeker for sending this out for my unbiased review. The iG200 trail camera captures video at 1080p and images at up to 20 megapixels. It has a 0.2 second trigger speed and 940 nm no glow LEDs. It does not offer Wi-Fi, so any photos and videos captured will need to be viewed on the LCD screen inside the camera or retrieved from the SD card. At the time of making this video, this camera is currently $59.99 US on Amazon. However, there is a 50% off coupon making this camera roughly $30 US. Be sure to check the links in the description below for current pricing and availability. Enough small talk, let's see what this $30 camera can do. Let's take a quick look at the packaging. On the front, we have the camera itself. On the side, we have some specs. 1080p video, 20 megapixel photos, no glow IR LEDs, and it's IP66 waterproof rating. On the back, we have some of the company information. Nothing on the top or the bottom of the box. Nothing on this side. And that brings us back to the front. This is everything included in the box. A mounting strap. Mini USB cable for data transfer. A user manual in a few different languages. And finally, the camera itself. Here we have our lens and some indicator lights. These are the no-glow IR LEDs. This is the main motion sensor. On this side are the clasps that allow you to open and close the camera. On the back, there are a few slots where the strap goes for mounting and a product information label. On this side are the hinges for the front cover to open and a battery door lock. On the bottom, we have a quarter 20 tripod mount a six volt connection port so you can power this via solar panel if you wish. You will just need to use some rechargeable batteries. Nothing on the top. And that brings us back to the front. To open the camera, unlock these two clasps. Be sure to remove any films from the sensor. Here are the control and navigational buttons. On, test, and off switch. A built-in speaker. On the bottom, we have our microphones, mini USB port, and the 6-volt connector. On the side is where the full-size SD card goes, which is not included. To access the battery tray, release this clasp and open the door. I would recommend using all 8 AA batteries for operation. The batteries are also not included. Once you've inserted your batteries, be sure to close the battery door and relock the clasp. To set up the camera, slide this button to test mode. You will need to use the up and down buttons to navigate and the OK button to select. 
These are all the languages you can choose from. Here you will need to set your current date and time. As you can see, I forgot to insert an SD card beforehand. No worries. Even though it recommends not to, I'm going to use a micro SD card inserted into a full size SD card adapter. I'm a rebel. Insert the SD card face up into the camera. Push until you hear the click. Keep in mind, I had the camera on this entire time. I would recommend putting the SD card in while the camera is off. However, if you did what I did, don't worry. You can simply turn the camera off and back on again. Tap the menu button to access the main menu. Here you can change the mode. I prefer photo and video mode myself. Here you can change the resolution of the photos. These are all the resolutions you can pick from. I'm going to go with the max of 20 megapixels. Here you can adjust how many photos are taken when triggered. I like the max of 3. Here you can change the video resolution. I will keep mine on the max of 1080p. Video length is how long the video will record for when triggered. The longer the video, the more space it will use on your SD card. I like 20 seconds. Turning this setting on will allow the camera to overwrite older files on the SD card should it become full. I like this setting to be off. The PIR interval is the amount of time that the camera waits before triggering another round of photos and videos. The lower the number, the faster it reloads. Keep in mind that the lower numbers also use more battery power. For this review, I will keep it on the default of 30. Here you can change the PIR sensitivity. I like to keep mine in the middle. You can set a specified time of day recording if you wish. You can record a time lapse. These are the same languages as in the beginning. Here you can manipulate the date and time if you need to. Hit the mode button to go back. Here you can access the camera's serial number. Here you can toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Here you can toggle the beep noise in the main menu. You can turn the audio recording on or off. Here you can adjust what gets displayed on the photos and videos. You can set a password for accessing the camera if you want. Here you can format the SD card. I would always recommend doing this before first use, even if your card is brand new. But what do I know? It's your funeral. You can reset all the settings back to default if you need to. Here you can check the firmware version. And that's all the settings. Tap the mode button to go back. Tapping the mode button from the main screen will allow you to switch between modes. Tapping once will take you to photo mode, tapping again will take you to video mode, and tapping again will take you to the files stored on the SD card. The up and down arrows don't do anything while on the main screen. Hitting the OK button while on the main screen triggers the camera according to your mode. Now you can see what's on the SD card. Tap the mode button to go back. That's everything. Turn off the camera, close it up, and it's time to mount it. I always like to double check my settings before letting it go, so I switch to test mode first. After that, 
turn the camera to on. You'll see a countdown begin. Once you're ready, close it up and you're off and running.
this trail camera from iZeeker is not bad at all for what it is. First off, it feels very well made and not cheap. It comes with almost everything you need. Just be sure to have 8 AA batteries and a full sized SD card before using. It's very easy to set up and use. The LCD screen inside the camera is easy to see and the overall menu is laid out nicely. The image and video quality isn't terrible, but it's certainly not the best out there. I don't think it's true 1080p videos or true 20 megapixel photos. With that said, for the sale price, it's really not that bad. This camera has been out in the rain, wind, snow, ice, and extreme cold. And by extreme, I mean the nearly negative 20 degree Fahrenheit temperatures we had here in the northeast around Christmas time. It's still operating with no issues to report. I can also confirm that no moisture got inside. All things considered, this isn't a bad trail camera by any means. It's very user friendly and straightforward in terms of operation. For the full price of $60 US, I don't think it's a very good deal. However, with the 50% off coupon, taking it down to nearly $30 US, yes, it's a great deal. For that price, it's a wonderful beginner's trail camera or just something nice to have as extra. You really can't go wrong with this for $30 US. Again, be sure to check the links in the description for current pricing and availability. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you found any of this content useful, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you won't miss a day when I post a new video. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.